Any given day on the campaign trail, much of the political discourse is about how to deal with the challenges facing the middle class. According to reporting by Bloomberg, America's wealthiest citizens now have as much wealth as the upper and middle classes combined. Joining us now to discuss which of the candidates will best stand up for the middle class is fellow at the Open Markets Institute and friend of the show, Matt Stoller. He joins us now. Great to see you, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah. All right. So Biden put out this is the peg for the segment is Biden put out his middle class right. plan we're heavy okay. on infrastructure. Guess we're going to have more infrastructure weeks. Good, good. Um, no mention of antitrust. And we thought we've got to talk to Matt Stoller about this. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> That's pretty much why, why do we why need antitrust? Matt? So yeah. um, if you were crafting the yeah. ideal middle class plan, how would you advise these candidates? Well, I mean, basically, it's a story, right? And the story is that American business is kind of has become gangster business at this mm. point, right? It's it's like you have Adam Newman who stole two billion dollars and laid ten thousand people off, or Boeing who spent you know whatever thirty forty billion dollars on stock buybacks instead of actually designing a plane and screwed over engineers, or you know China which is using our own corporations to censor our own people. I mean, basically, what you have is a world in which everybody is living in office space, you know, with Bill Lumberg and the Bobs running everything, and that's what our actual lived experience is. So somebody <laughs> needs to actually say that and be like, hey, American business shouldn't be crime, right? And of course, nobody's actually saying that except some people sort of on the right. I mean, Tom Cotton is the only one who came out after the WeWork thing happened and was right. like, Adam Newman shouldn't be getting $2 billion for ruining a company. I'm not saying it was a company, but he right. ruined something. Um, and, and, um, and, and this is, he's like, this is why people are moving to Bernie Sanders. It's like, people feel like there's a crisis. You need to explain why there's a crisis. And what I see right now is no one's actually explaining what the real problem is, which is just mass fraud at the top of American society, pillaging our companies, pillaging our communities. And the lived experience is that they then give, uh, they, they give control over your life to, you know, the Bobs or someone like, you know, Pete Buttigieg right. to like lay people off or manipulate you or control or you. Deval really, or Deval Patrick. Or Deval Patrick. Or any of these, yeah. like, these, like, these are bad people, right? Yeah. And they, they do bad things and they do it with this kind of radical indifference to normal people. And that's the lived experience that no one's quite captured. Honestly, the, the, the closest person who has captured that is kind of like a Donald Trump, yeah. which, you know, I don't like Donald Trump, but he certainly kind of gives you that sense that there are people who are manipulating and controlling you, which is true. And no one on the left is actually kind of even I mean, Bernie's a little bit closer than anyone else, but like that's actually what's going on mm -hmm. in our culture. So talk, right. talk about that. So why why is it that you see such a deficit of that on the left? You know, I mean, we, you know, you're here to talk about Joe Biden, the whole field, but it seems to see that you don't see anybody in the field that's really articulating it, uh, articulating this particular case. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, as I say in my yeah. book, Goliath, <laughs> yes, yes. the hundred year war. Yeah. I'm, li I'm yeah. listening to the audible version. Yeah. Whoever you got to do it, it's got a great voice. Oh, yes. well, uh, thank you. It was uh, <laughs> option three. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> good. He's very option good. Option three no. is excellent. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, well, no, it's, it's an ideological thing. So, so the left is basically people are not interested in business, right? If you're a Democrat, you don't care about business. Typically, you don't care about uh, the military, you don't care about finance. These are things that are not part of politics to you. And so Democrats know about 10 slogans, and that's it. And if you say, hey, there's a really serious problem, say, at Boeing, what are we going to do about that? People will just, like, they'll either say, oh, yeah, we need more regulation, right. hand wave that away, or, oh, capitalism, hand wave that away. But it's like actually caring about what happens to to like Boeing or in Comcast or in WeWork, that's something that only Republicans are paying attention to for some reason. I don't understand it. I've been tearing think, my hair out, I but I don't get it. Partly this thing though of like a deference to expertise and technocracy and a capture of the Democratic yeah. Party too by like the McKinsey class. I mean, you mentioned Mayor Pete, but there's like that the shift in the Democratic Party has been away from workers who would have the most sort of you know beef with what's going on towards this like the managers who are sort of managing the destruction and themselves be benefiting from what's happening. Well, I see it on the left, too. I don't think mm -hmm. it's a centrist thing. I think this is as big a problem on the left. I think the the whole argument about the from the, the, the sort of Jacobin left is is bad faith. Hmm. Um, I like, you know, instead of... What do you of, mean by that? Well, look, I mean, the left was like, loved Obama. And I was, you know, at the time, I was like, this guy's kind of a con artist, right? Yeah. And he's like a bad 
he's not going to, he's lying, right? It was obvious he was lying from 2005 onward. Some of us said it publicly, and I don't, you know, and, and, but like people embraced him, and then he did a bunch of bad things. Right. And instead of being like, oh, that guy did a bunch of bad things, like the left is like, oh, capitalism is the problem. Because it's way easier to be like, oh, it's a system of, you know, oppression and gods and monsters than to be like, oh, we got fooled, hmm. right? And so now you have people that are, you know, you have a whole movement that's making sort of stupid arguments about electability or stupid arguments about bold strategy or tactics instead of just being like, we got fooled by a guy who did a bad job. But it seems to me like the Jacobin left is pretty critical of Obama at this point. No, they're not critical of Obama. They they make the argument that, no, because it's not just being about critical. It of, it's be, not but, critical but, about But here's oh, the thing. You can focus on the, the individual humans who have responsibility. No, no, it's about focus, us. It's but about it, us. But it, you can also say, you know, the, there's a part of a, the reason why you get an Obama, right, why you get a Biden, why you get a Buddha is because of structural systemic issues. No, too. it's not. It's mm. we did it, right? We have to take responsibility for it, right? Mm. Like, I don't hear anybody on the left saying, take Bernie and the health care plan, right? And I want Medicare for all. Yeah. But the reality is, Obama lied about a bunch of stuff in the ACA, and the voters don't trust Democrats and they don't trust government for good reason. Sure. We lied to them. Mm -hmm. People, you know, think, oh, Bernie is trustworthy. It's not, that's not the issue. The issue is, can government succeed? Voters are scared. They're scared of health care. And when you talk to voters, they say, you know, I like Bernie. I like what he stands for. But I'm scared because this is my health care talking about. And the last yeah. time you guys said you would do this, you didn't. No, right. but and I, I feel like that's... I, I think that's, see, that's I, the interesting part, is that you see that Bernie is actually the most trusted amongst Democratic right. voters. Because think, he's willing to call healthcare. BS on the Democratic Party. I know he's not, though. Mm. He's I haven't seen him. No, he is them. not. He yeah. is yeah. No. Well, they, well, they <laughs> say that about Warren, too. But here's, when has he criticized Obama? I'm missing the the part I'm missing. He criticized him this weekend. He got asked, was deporting? You know, millions right. of people Has he mistaken. said Obama he said, was yes. a bad president the way that right. you would say about a George Bush or the way that you would say about a Republican who, if he had no, done the same that's things fair, that Obama but the, did? The piece I'm missing in your and I'm really trying to understand your yeah. argument. The piece I'm missing is the only people that I hear saying what you're saying is the Jacobin left, is the actual left who says NAFTA, you know, a devastating mistake. Normal rela trading relations with China, devastating mistake. Bailing out the banks and screwing over homeowners, devastating mm -hmm. mistake. I only hear that. From within the, you know, liberal progressive world, I only hear that from the Jacobin left. That's because that's the only, the only people that you're listening to. Hmm. If you actually listen to the centrists, they're saying the same thing. Hmm. And and I think it's in bad faith, too. Mm -hmm. We had Third Way on here the other day. Yeah. We had no labels on here the other well, day. Well, I mean, you'll... They weren't saying that. You're going to find <laughs> that if you listen to... Like, if, if you listen to, like, Pete Buttigieg, for example, mm -hmm. is saying is saying this. He's saying, um, you know, we need a new generation. He's the closest one to actually saying it. And I don't like Pete Buttigieg. I think Pete Buttigieg is a con artist. But he's actually the, the closest one who's actually saying we need a new generation Pete of Buttigieg leadership Pete Buttigieg said here. we need more Supreme Court justices like Kennedy. Pete Buttigieg got pressed on whether— You, you know, you're not going to—you're not going to convince—you're yeah. you're right. You're yeah. absolutely right about yeah. Buttigieg. He's like— Terrible, right? And, but and, like, but who's the point the is, centrist that's leveling well, I think, this. No, critique. I think you're you're not wrong because I did cover this here. Is that Obudajej came very close where he was like the old normal is the problem. He was misquoted as saying the Obama administration was the problem, and it's like, well, what were you really trying to say? Is that Obama was right. the problem? Yeah, yeah, but, but you can't he, go out and actually got say asked it. About it. Right. No, he was I like, love no, 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 Obama. I love Obama. Well, and that's the same thing that you yeah. know, Ilhan Omar right. come out and right. said, made a criticism of Obama directly, and then yeah. she just retreated. It's very popular. Yeah. What you don't find, I just think it's yeah. fear. I mean, yeah. I think if somebody just came out and said it at this point, I think it would be well, fine. Well, so you have come out and said it. And this yeah, is, yeah, I say it all the time. Obama actually, so my theory is that he was talking about your Twitter feed. Is but that whenever he was like the, leftist, the Twitter, left leading, you know, left Twitter leaning, feeds, uh, are you Twitter. that? I, I do feed? believe that that is the Twitter feed. But I mean, I want to give you a chance <laughs> to comment on that too. Is Obama coming out saying, "Oh, these, you know, these progressive lefties on Twitter, you know, going after"? He's like, people don't want big structural change. I just don't think that's true. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of it's interesting. Like Obama, I just. He has a legacy that he's trying to protect, mm -hmm. and the problem is the legacy is a dumpster fire, right? right. And everybody kind of knows it. No one will actually admit it. And so we have these strange arguments that have to do with, like, weird questions of lefty versus moderate or yeah. whatever. But the reality is you have an ideological collapse of neoliberalism, and it's global. And you see it kind of everywhere. And we're having this strange debate where we say, oh, the opposition to this is some leftist thing or a moderate thing. And that's the debate that Obama wants to have, 
right? Because he wants to have the debate about whether you should go too far left or whether you should be a moderate, instead mm -hmm. of the debate about whether he just screwed everything up, which right. is like much, it's much more, it's much simpler. <laughs> he didn't send anyone to jail. Nobody supports yeah. that. He didn't do, you know, an elite, I mean, he sent a lot of people to jail, just nobody who caused the financial crisis. Sure. Like, and, and the, the, right. point, the point here is Bill Clinton did a lot of really bad things. And, and I, when I say Obama, I don't just mean Obama. I mean the entire kind of Democrats in yeah. Congress. Because in the 1930s, and this is, I go over this, like, yeah. this is a Democratic party and a left, which has accepted the decision and endorsed the decisions that all of these people made. I mean, I saw Barney, I was on the Financial Services Committee, right. I saw Bar what Barney did, I saw how these people thought. Barney and, Frank, who now sits on the board of a bank. Well, that's true, but I also saw the left completely ignore foreclosures. Like, mm -hmm. I saw, yeah. like, this, the decisions that we made were our decisions, and we endorsed them, and that is not what happened in the 1930s, and we have to really understand why, and it's not this weird left moderate thing. It's the fact that people who work for a living, and I I don't just mean workers, I mean engineers, I mean business people, I mean farmers, I mean a whole bunch of people that Democrats don't see, right? And Republicans don't see mm -hmm. some of these people too. A whole bunch of these people are not seen and it's the real enemy is the financier, the manipulator, the, the monopolist, the, the bobs, right? That's who the real enemy is. And we don't have a politics in which we can actually see that because you have this sort of, everyone has their own flavor of the, 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 the illusion of neoliberalism. And so until we get to a place where the right wing, the populists on the right and the yeah. populists on the left are able to work together and are able to see business, we are not going to be able to overcome the dominance of finance. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, well Sagar and I are doing that work every day. Yeah. You, here. Guys, you guys are doing the Lord's yeah, work. I love trying. it. I love it. Thank you, man. Thank you, Matt. Always. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Next up on Rising, the filing deadline for the New Hampshire primary has officially passed. That means it's time for a Granite State update from friend of the show, Paul Steinhauser. So he shares his conversations with the candidates as they came by to register, and he's also going to tell us which contenders didn't bother to get on that ballot. <laughs> When Rising continues.